Dr. Mira Markus Kalisch is currently the Director for International Research Affairs at Tel Aviv University and a senior, science, senior research fellow at the Interdisciplinary Center of Technological Analyst and Forecasting. Dr. Kalish studied uh, and got a PhD in the Technion University in Haifa, and she did her postdoctoral training at Boston, at Harvard University, and the Dana Farber Cancer Institute. Coming back to Israel, she joined the Weizmann Institute, working with Professor Katz here, mainly on protein interactions, and then moved to the Tel Aviv University Business School. She was also involved in private business enterprises and served as a scientific advisor, later as the head of enterprise marketing department of IBM Israel. Actually, her main interest and areas of interest are mathematical modeling, converging technologies, and data mining, and that's also kind of the basis of our uh, talk, which is categorization, classification, and clustering strategies targeting at the example of personalized healthcare. Thank you. I didn't know it's so long. <laughs> so first of all, thank you for coming uh, and staying here in this session. And the second thing, amazingly enough, um, I found a lot of co uh, connection between my talk and the previous one, which I didn't expect. Um, and I, I hope to show it to you during this uh, session. So first of all, uh, what I want to, uh, we are speaking about uh, targeted medicine. We have another buzzword, which is personalized medicine. The real question is how do we really accomplish that? What do we mean by these things? And how could we do it, you know, in, in a reliable and reproducible way? And this is the main um, uh, target of our talk because we were trying to come up with some solution to these barriers, to these problems. And that what connects um, uh, us to, to the previous call in, in two manners. First, uh, I just put Monet in order for you to see that we really want to see the whole picture and everybody sees something different. And as was just said regarding the publications, is that nobody knows all. So we were trying to combine the various knowledge and we'll see it. And second, um, my partner in developing the 3C methodology, um, he was mentioned in the last publication of Nature quoting the 100 paper um, most quoted ever, and he was number 59, the only Israeli, uh, the, the only statistician, uh, the Israeli statistician that was quoting and is my partner. So, you know, it's, we always come back to the same things. So, um, wh what is our goal when we are talk talking about targeted medicine or personalized medicine? Actually, we want to understand not only the mechanism which is locally, we want to see and understand the underlying rules. What are the micro and macro environment? And when I'm speaking at micro and macro, it's, it's in, just to make it roughly, it's, it's inside the body and outside the body. It's the culture, it's the environment, it's the nutrition. Many things that usually in our basic science we don't really uh, target. And, and actually, th as we saw, the whole picture uh, is very hard to understand yet. We have a lot of data, we don't understand the whole picture. And therefore, what we were trying to define is a disease signature, some signature of a disease that differentiate from one disease to the other or is predictive enough and reliable enough in the disease. And, and in the previous lecture, we heard also about signatures. So we are speaking about really uh, trying to do the signature. But the question is, could we really provide? Could we really provide the promise? And, and it's, not, it's not that easy, but the right environment today is better than ever. And uh, um, I was trying to, to, to talk about this convergence and looking of the whole uh, point of view uh, many years ago, but it wasn't ready. I think nowadays we are more ready for that. Also politically, globally, uh, uh, you know, the EU, the US, and so on. And also uh, we, have, we heard uh, this morning about technology enabling. Um, we heard about all this need. And in this lecture, in this um, very short lecture, we'll try to focus on the brain because we are part of the Human Brain Project. 
So what is a disease signature? So how could we really define it? Um, an individualized um, signature, tailored treatment, which is right to a specific uh, uh, patient. And we heard today also in Patrick uh, Uziker uh, in the morning a keynote lecture that we want to combine. We want to combine the whole data. We want to combine the biological marker and the clinical test and everything. And you remember his group, which are coming from various areas, but it's not easy because each one is very targeted, and we were trying to see the whole picture. So, uh, and, and, and it has a lot, a lot of uh, barriers, and there are more talk today than ever, uh, the responsibility, the replicability, all these barriers. And, and I just mentioned one, one example uh, that, you know, it was a big publication, but there are many today, and then three years later, you can't reproduce, you can't, uh, it's not reliable enough. So the question is, could we provide really the promise and how should we do it? And just few challenges that I wanted to know. First of all, we rely very strictly about uh, the, the diagnosis, the, the professional diagnosis. Um, it's too crude, but however, they have knowledge. They have knowledge that we have to capture. Then uh, we have the personalized medicine solution, but it is still, uh, we need it heterogeneously. It's still not there, and we have a, a lot of data, not enough to really define the heterogeneity. And then uh, we have the leakage that I'll, I'll show you in a minute, and it's still very hard to combine biological marker and clinical data and all that. And we have the big data, which is still a big challenge. But like I talked last year, I mean, still the big data if I want to treat personalized medicine, medicine, it's big data versus small data. We never have enough replication, never of the same group. So the, the, the real barriers are, and, and you know, now it's published ev all over. It's the big data versus the small data, the leakage, the replicability, reproducibility, confidentiality, and so on. Those are the mathematical, statistical, uh, modeling problems that we tackle, we are trying, it, we, and we are not there yet. So um, just one example that I'll do it very, very briefly, that we never have enough, especially in brain, we never have enough replicable. And Thompson at UCLA uh, looked at the EDNI database, which is a research database, which is better than the hospital, because the hospital is even more vaguely. So just a, a, an example of the voxels are, um, versus the SNPs. So we have, you know, 32,000 uh, voxels uh, versus 448,000 SNPs. And this is a reduced one. So just to make it very short, we will need 30 billion patients or 30 billion examples. We will never have it. So we need different approach. We need different mathematics. We need to find a better way. So um, just to make it uh, very, very uh, 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 short, uh, just another example of the EDNI databank that I'll, I'll show the results on this same database. So uh, the leakage, so it's enough if you go to the hospital that they don't do uh, you a specific test that you are not Alzheimer's disease because if they suspect, they will do. So, you know, so the missing values, actually another big problem that I don't have time to go into, the missing values were the best predictor of somebody to be um, Alzheimer's disease or normal. So it's ridiculous, but these are the barriers. So what we came up with, we came up with what we call a 3C, and really the, the goal was to try and to combine the various um, data that we still have, to try and combine the knowledge of the physician, their experience, their known or unknown, if sometimes they are not aware, and then combine it to biomarkers and then apply all various tools to, to come up with some clusters which are better. And that's what we did. I'll go very fast because we don't have time. This is the ADNI database. I think most of you are, are aware. It's the Alzheimer's disease uh, American data bank. Um, everybody has to sign and so on. But you can see we have a little bit clinical. We have just 
a bit of genetics, some protein expression, and some imaging, not f uh, PET imaging, not very much. But still, so what did we do? We started with categorization. We started to um, rely on the physician diagnosis. Upon his diagnosis, what are the features that he decided that some patient is like that or like that? Mainly clinical data. So we started with that and we started to categorize and to understand his knowledge and to learn from that. So that was the first stage. The second stage was clustering, where we did supervise. So we took his diagnosis, his classification of the patient upon his uh, features, and we reanalyzed it in a way that we can uh, come up with more features that maybe he wasn't aware of. So that was the second one, which was the supervised. And then we did the third, I, I'm not going into the mathematics because um, I'll be happy to explain later because we don't have time. And then we went to the, uh, to the clustering upon these groups, mainly clinical data upon the, the knowledge of the physician. And then we got clustering. And, and we uh, combined various approach. We did simulation model to evaluate that. I don't want to go into that. And then uh, we got to, this, to the classification, trying to bring in, was, once we had those clusters, to bring in, uh, you know, the biomarkers, meaning the genetics, the, the imaging data. We had a little bit of that, and what we call the biomarkers, and try to put it on those clustering and refine the clustering and see whether we can do it better. This is a supervised. Actually, everything... Um, to, towards the disease signature, which we are always in at the same times, like we heard today, even Rodolf Stromayer said that we have to combine and bring in the ethics and, every, and uh, all the various uh, knowledge. So we are still tar targeting uh, to, to understand and to define disease signature from the philosophical point of view and, and other point of view. Um, so I'll do it very fast. So the results are we did just this, this is one um, example of the results. Um, so we, we did the card and we did um, the other, um, in the left, I don't know how to point out. Uh, it's another rule discovery uh, data mining tools that uh, I discovered. And, and it's actually more to try to understand rules which are very easy to translate to the clinic. But the real result that we got is instead of the five groups that were defined in the EGNI databank, there were five groups defined upon five parameters at all. We started with 193 parameters, like you saw in the previous slide. We reduced it to 20, and we came up with 10 subclasses instead for Alzheimer's disease, instead of the five that were there. Just as an example, the first, the first one, is the healthy one, and you can see um, the first, I don't know if you put, the first slope down is the perception of the patient, and the second one is the memory. And then if you look at the second group, just see the differences, it's again is what the, the patient or is surrounding people thinks about himself. But the most interesting thing is to show you how we did, and this is almost the start, you just see how we did it. We, we, we used many uh, different uh, techniques, k-means and distance and so on. I, I wouldn't go into that. And we refined the groups, but you see the top level is our 10 groups, and the, the, the five down is the ethnic. And you can see already that the green and the, and the blue are in two different groups in the ethnic. And while I'm talking, you'll see it, it works, and this is exactly like it's working. It's combining every time new features and evaluating them uh, according to what we did. It will take a minute, and, and then you can see all the 10 groups. What is the advantage of that? And now we are working. You see, these are the 10 groups, and at the bottom you see the ethnic. They'll combine those specific classes. So we were much better refined, and now we are working further, and we are down to six very well-defined groups. So um, this is just an example um, to, to show you how, um, 
how it works. I can't stop it because of the system here. So it will take uh, another minute and it will stop. Okay? Because we couldn't click, we just have. Oh, okay, it works. So the summary is that actually I wouldn't go through that, but we achieved most of our goals. And the most important thing is the group that we were working. And um, as we said, chances favor the prepared mind. So join me to make a big change. And the group, Professor Yoav Benjamin is the one that I told you that was quoting as one of the top 100 most quoted papers. And this is our groups combining of uh, medical doctors, statistician, mathematician, and uh, computer science. Thank you. We have time for one short question and a short answer. Very nice. So uh, from the simulation, I understand that you did clustering rather than rule to get the 10 groups. How would you compare clustering? I know it's a little bit mathematics, but how would you compare uh, Boolean rules as compared to uh, cl um, uh, clustering of groups in, uh, in mean, terms of uh, uh, defining the, the different groups? Uh, thank you. I will take your question even further because um, and it relates to many lectures that we heard today. The idea is really there is no one system, not one technique, not one rule that can provide the whole picture. So the best thing I would say is, you know, to combine and to move from one technique to the other and refine all the way. Like if I'm doing in my technique the rule discovery, I'm getting like 10 or 20 very small, very specific groups. Then I can take those features and move further to with another technique and see what, what does it mean. At the end, we, I think we will have to do some kind of voting, trying different techniques. Each technique, as I always say, provides a different insight, and just the combination of the whole techniques will tell us what is the real broad picture, or in our case, the refined uh, you know, structures of the disease. To be uh, to, to early detection, to early treatment, to, to uh, you know, everything that we want to we want to do to to uh, to give a better treatment. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you.